Come on, Monsieur, wake up. I said, wake up. You're starting to worry me. Oh, thank goodness. I wasn't sure whether I'd have to find a doctor or a mortician. Ugh. My head. Where am I? The Pont d'Art. You know, by the Louvre. In Paris. France. I just fished out the sign. I nearly broke my rod doing it. Wait, I know you. You're that disrespectful lawyer guy. Giro Falco or something? What time is it? Actually, what day is it? You hit your head pretty hard, huh? It's the 21st of January. And around 9 o'clock in the morning, by my reckoning. 21st. Oh my gosh, my cat just meowed and it was so cute. Sorry. 21st, 9 o'clock. Oh no, the trial. I should have been at Cour de Assis 10 minutes ago. Hi, Kiri. Oh, no, it wants all the love. Eh, I'm sorry. He. He wants all the love. Hi, Isaac. Well, you're running late. But take it easy, Monsieur. I'm sure they'll be understanding. Maybe if I sprint it. In your condition? That would be stupid. Take a seat. Clear your head. I'll go get some dry clothes. Oh, hi, Isaac. Are you sitting on my lap? You'd be a good kitty while Mummy records. Mummy has to entertain the YouTube people so that you can get all of the food. Yes, she does. Yes, she does. Oh my gosh, can you hear my kitty meowing? Oh my gosh, that wasn't a meow, that was a purr. <laughs> I know the difference. Anyway. Uh, take a seat, clear your head. I'll go get some dry clothes. No time. Wait, Monsieur, at least take this before you go. What's this, a dip pen? No, wait, it's a modern fountain pen. Um, best pens, Pilot G7s, just saying. Bone handle, gold nib. This is very fancy. Thanks, Monsieur, but this isn't mine. Really? Are you sure? You're holding it pretty tightly when I found you. I was holding this? Then I suppose it has to be mine. Fountain pen has been added to your evidence folder. <gasps> Ooh, I wonder who it belonged to. Thanks, fisherman. I owe you one. <laughs> hey, hey, don't call me a fisherman. Alright. I'm sorry I'm late, everyone. It's nine o'clock. I believe it's time for the roll call. I'm here. Is the defense not present? I'm coming. Tsk, such unprofessionalism. Rude. If there's no defense, this trial cannot proceed any further. We must make a ruling based on the evidence that has already been presented. I will now converse with the jury. We shall decide whether Prince Juan is guilty of murdering Major Hill and of conspiring to murder the king. Your Honor, may I have a word? Fine, but make it quick. I'm a firm believer that a trial must be orderly and punctual. There is no room for wishy-washy dilly-dallying, but it seems somewhat rash to end a trial session the moment it's due to start. Perhaps it would be prudent to wait five or ten minutes, just in case the defence is just a little tardy. Then the trial still has a chance to proceed and justice will be served. Hmm, maybe you're not all bad, Kokuriko. You're the prosecution, are you not? You have nothing to worry about. A guilty verdict is all but guaranteed. You are not the game, I accidentally clicked off of it. Your Honour, you appear confused. I'm not here to secure a guilty verdict. Of course you are. You're a prosecutor. By definition, you're here to prosecute. No, my job description is to prosecute. But I am here in this courtroom to ensure that justice is served. You know what? Maybe I do like you, Kokuriko. You are all about the justice. An unfair and unbalanced trial is not in the spirit of justice. Hear, hear. Kokuriko, hear, hear. That's very noble of you, but if the defence is absent, then there is little that can be done. I'll hear no more about this matter. I'll now talk with the jury. I'm here! I'm here! I'm here! The... <sighs> defence is present, <sighs> Your Honour. You're too late, Falcon. Mon jewel, JJ. You look like a total mess. Did you take a morning swim in the sign or something? S something like that. Your Honour, we are all present. We are only three minutes over schedule. Let's not needlessly dirty the pure name of justice. Rules are rules, prosecutor. Falcon clearly has no respect for legal procedure. Frankly, for turning up while looking like a drowned rat, I ought to hold him in contempt of court. Your Honour. <sighs> but Your Honour. Rules are rules. One more word out of either of you and I shall have you both disbarred. Damn. It's a pity. The King of France was most looking forward to standing behind the witness podium. The... The King of France? He's here? 
Oh, are we, are we not doing the trial after all? That's a pity. <laughs> I offend a lot of French people. Oh, uh, your majesty, what a surprise. We are, well, you see... The no is my seventh time test flying against a would-be assassin. But uh, it's the first time seeing a trial where the curse has ended before it even began. Okay, I'm not keeping up that accent because it is awful. Well, the defense, uh, he was late and a... Oh, pish posh. France didn't become a great and dignified kingdom through rigorous punctuality. Let's go ahead with this trial. It'll be fun. Look, I'll see the oath to get started. I swear to speak without hatred and without fear. To tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Did I, did I get it right? That was perfect, your majesty. GG, I trust you have no objections with the king testifying? No, no objections here. Going ahead with the trial is fine with me. And surely you wouldn't stand in the way of the king, would you, your honour? Gah, fine. Proceed with this cursed trial. Excellent. Now, your majesty, could you tell us your activities on the day of the murder? My activities? Well, I started my day with tea and toast, as I normally do. I was dressed in my pyjamas at the time. I think you can skip ahead a little. Perhaps to your arrival at the Louvre. Ah, right, of course. Well, my entourage and I entered the Louvre south entrance around 9 o'clock. We passed through the Salle de Tibre with a little fanfare. At the Grand Gallery, I unveiled a new painting and gave a short speech to inspire the citizens who attended. That's when I was approached by a man claiming to be the Prince of Spain. He presented a rose, which was taken by Major Howell, and... Well, I think you know the rest. Indeed we do, Your Majesty. Madames and Messieurs of the Court, what we have here is another testimony that establishes Prince Juan's guilt. I need all the water. I suddenly become so thirsty when I have to do a recording that requires a lot of speech like this. I should really just drink off a straw so it's less like gulping <laughs> in the recording. I mean, I still have to gulp with a straw, but I think it would be less. I don't know. I'm overthinking this. And this is no ordinary testimony. It is a testimony of perhaps the most trustworthy man in all of France. Oh, you flatter me, prosecutor. But I am the trustworthiest in all of the kingdom, aren't I? I have no doubts, your majesty. Nonetheless, I would like to perform a cross-examination. How dare you doubt your king, the utter nerve! Oh, calm yourself, judge. I am no qualms of standard legal procedure. Defence, please proceed. I want to see your best courtroom drama material. I like to imagine that Louis likes to like kick back after a whole day of kingdoming. Kinging? Yeah, something like that. And he just kicks back and watches Law and Order. Particularly Law and Order SVU because Olivia Benson rules all. Select the statement to question. Okay, the south entrance. Your Majesty, you say that you entered the Louvre from the south entrance. Indeed. We approached from the Hotel de Ville, so it was an easy riverside stroll. Did you see anyone or anything suspicious around the Louvre's entrance? Suspicious? I'm afraid not, Monsieur. Just the regular riverside types. Bourgeois, vendors, people with fish and the like. I see. Uh, okay, well, I don't think I have any other things to question there. Your Majesty, you say that you passed through the Sol de Tibre uneventfully. Indeed, we stopped briefly to look at the paintings and then moved on to the Grand Gallery. There are several rooms between the Louvre's south entrance and the Grand Gallery, but you've only mentioned the Sol de Tibre by name. Why is that? Oh, it was the only room we looked around in detail. The other rooms we simply passed straight through. Why did you stop in that room specifically? Well, see, there was this giant doorstop that caught my eye and sparked a debate. Say no more, Your Majesty. Now, Your Majesty, I would like to ask about your activities in the Grand Gallery. Aside from the Prince of Spain, did you see anyone out of the ordinary in the Grand Gallery? Why, Monsieur, the Grand Gallery is always inhibited by artists. Everyone there is out of the ordinary. Nonetheless, can you think of anyone who stood out? Is this question going somewhere, JJ, or are you blindly stabbing in the dark? It's a perfectly fine question. Please answer, Your Majesty. Who did you see? Well, I don't know. I saw dozens of paintbrush-wielding, moustache-touting weirdos. Be specific, Your Majesty. I saw photographers and sculptors and sketchers and hipsters and... And just what do you want me to say, Monsieur? Look what you've done, JJ. You've stressed the poor king out. Badgering the king? <coughs> Absolutely disgusting behaviour. They're stalling. What a buffoon. No! We lost favour of the jury. We're doing really awful. Um... 
Your Majesty, you say that you're presented with a rose by the Prince of Spain. Indeed, Farmland will introduce himself. I knew he was telling the truth because he called me Senor. Your Majesty, Prosecutor, members of the court, brace yourselves because I have a revelation that will turn this trial on its head. Juan Querido is not the Prince of Spain. That's not a revelation, Falcon. That isn't. Of course not. We all know that the current ruler is Queen of Rage and Isabella II and that she has no children. The Queridos are obviously pretenders to the throne. Prince Juan's title is probably self-appointed. But his name isn't even Juan Querido. I don't even think the fo fox is Spanish. So what? So, so what? That's important. JJ, what's important is that the man is accused of committing murder and of conspiring to kill the king. That's what's in dispute here. The man's name is irrelevant. He could be named Juan Querido or Bob Strini for all I care. Doesn't change the events that transpired on the morning of January 6th. I mean... I'm sure there's a counter-argument there. I suppose that's true. Uh, I find it curious that Major Hill snatched the rose before you could take it. Why did he do that? He's always been a protective fellow. I think he was just doing his diligence as a royal guard. And given how he took the figurative bullet for me, I would say that he did his job well. Well, I can't argue with that. Okay, what have I missed when it comes to questioning? We'll go back to the south entrance. Are you sure that you entered the Louvre's south entrance? Oh, mon dieu, Falcon. Are you seriously still tugging at this thread? The king himself just testified, under oath no less, that he entered through the south entrance. You cannot possibly have any reason to call this fact into question. I think I have a reason. Please answer the question, your majesty. <laughs> I probably don't. Oh my god, I'm going to lose favour of the jury again. Of course, I'm sure. I know I'm getting on, monsieur, but I'm not senile. How dare you insult the king with such a stupid question, not to mention wasting the course time the utter nerve! And I pissed off the jury. Alright, no more questions there. Oh, what am I missing? What did I see? Well, Roman stuff, mostly. I mean, aside from the Roman artifacts, for example, did you see, did you talk to someone in the room who wasn't a member of your entourage? You're reaching. The king already testified that he passed through without encountering anything of interest. I want him to elaborate, then I suppose that you'll have to proceed, Your Majesty. Alright, let me think. So there was that giant doorstop, and there was that copper urn thing. There was something else now that you ask. I was offered a box of chocolates by some peasant mademoiselle. I don't have much of a sweet tooth, but Major Howell was keen to accept the chocolate or two on my behalf. What? Hmm, did I say something startling, Prosecutor? N no, please continue, Your Majesty. I think the prosecution has started because he just came to the realisation that I was not spouting drivel in the previous trial session. Well, that's debatable. To cut a long story short, Your Majesty, this mademoiselle may hold some relevance to the case at hand. Could you describe her? Really? She's relevant? Well, let me think. I didn't get a good look at her face, but she was a sorry-looking swan. Probably in her late teens or early twenties. A young sorry-looking swan, you say? I don't suppose her name was... Mademoiselle Signe or whatever. That sounds familiar. Why, yes, I think that was it. I see. This is undoubtedly significant. She gave chocolates to Major Howe before she, he died. Now just one minute. I see what you're alluding to, JJ. You're suggesting that the gifted chocolates killed the mayor. But that line of reasoning holds no weight because the evidence is circumstantial. Circumstantial, my tail feathers. The king just testified that he ate the chocolates. Yes, that much is no longer in dispute, but you have still not proved that the chocolates were poisoned. Without that, we must assume that the swan is merely offering a gift rather than speculating that she is a murderer. Hey, where's our friend? Yes, yes. Shame on you, defence, implicating a poor innocent girl like that. Absolutely disgusting why I ought to end this trial. Hold on, I do have evidence that the chocolate was in fact poisoned. Oh yeah, because I think he was in the hospital, was he not? I don't believe you, JJ. If you had a piece of evidence that significant, you would have slammed it down already. Present it. Well, it's not really the evidence holder type of evidence. Why am I not surprised? The drama was just getting good. Why did you all suddenly go quiet? Well, Your Majesty, it appears that the defence just had a realisation of his own. That is, that he lacks evidence to support his theory. Since he cannot continue with his argument, I believe the cross-examination has come to an end. I'm not done yet. Let me present my evidence. See, I had the chocolate wrapper back in my office and Sparrowson ate it. Stop. JJ, stop while well, you have a little dignity. The results of whatever crackpot pseudoscientific experiment you perform do not constitute valid evidence. I think this trial is over, Your Honour. My bloody time. Take your leave, Your Majesty. You may take your leave, sorry. I was very rude. Very well. I am pleased that justice has been thoroughly served. Until the next assassination attempt, adieu, Monsieurs. I will now deliberate with the jury. 
Objection! <gasps> Sparrowson! Sorry, I've always wanted to do that. Sparrowson, are you okay? Yep. Doctor said I have an iron stomach. Most of the poison passed straight through me. Speaking of which, I would like to testify on that poison chocolate issue. Yes, we can pull this back, guys.